My name is Arne van der Maartenberg. Uh, I work at Leiden Universal Medical Center in the Netherlands. And uh, I have a, bi a basic training in biology and uh, genetics. And more and more I'm involved in uh, neuroscience of uh, episodic neurological disorders, which means neurological disorders that go in certain patterns. And that is also how I got involved in AHC, because the hemiplegia part of the disease was very similar to what I was studying with migraine, because there we had families with familial hemiplegic migraine, and it sounded only like a logical step to also study AHC. So that's how I got involved in this type of research. If you think of AHC as a basic scientist, I always get struck by, uh, by the, uh, the severe phenotype if you go to these uh, patient, parent organization meetings, uh, and I'm not used to that. So I think of AHC, what you normally read in, in, in text, as a disease with hemiplegia, similar to what I'm used to with uh, familiar hemiplegia memory. But I'm always struck that it's way more severe and such, uh, let's say, uh, an important disease to study. I was involved, I think, around 2007, and it was because the founder of ANRA, which is one of the organizations that tries to uh, increase research in Europe for AHC, she was in the Netherlands, and her child of, with AHC was attended uh, in our university. And that's uh, the first time I encountered uh, AHC research. And then I, I moved with her to these meetings and got uh, more involved, got to do my own research. And uh, let's say this is now seven, eight years ago. So uh, it's quite an important part of my research, actually. If you think back for, for a second on how it started, we had no idea what the disease was. There, there were a lot of children with different types of severity, and uh, we were struggling, actually, as scientists, whether this was one disease or many diseases. And with the identification of the gene, it became crystal clear that there is one type of disease, although with different severity, if you look at different mutations, and that it was a major step forward. Now, in the last two years or so, you see that people are starting to look at the functional consequence of these mutations. There's an animal mouse model for this. So my hopes for the future are quite high that uh, if you are this far in a relative short amount of time, that must be, uh, let's say, a lot of achievements must be possible in coming uh, few years, I think. One of the important things when you deal with uh, scientists, basically the scientific community as a patient organization, is to keep your disease on the agenda. That so many diseases, rare diseases, and a relatively little fund, and uh, let's say, so it's a very important that uh, patient organizations make clear what they want from, from, from the community and from researchers, and that they actively participate in the discussions. And that's exactly what I see happening with AHC. So I think uh, that interaction is going well, and we should uh, even intensify that over the, the coming years, I think. So if you would consider AHC, the, the discovery for a cure for AHC as a 10-hour flight, how far would we be, right? Um, it's hard to look in the future, but what I can tell you from the last, last few years is at least this flight is going in one direction, right? Earlier, we may have gone in the wrong direction, 10 hours. So now at least we go in one direction. It may take 10 hours or may take 12. Hopefully it takes seven. But uh, the pilot knows what they're doing. And the pilot being the researchers and the patient organizations all in the cockpit together, trying to maneuver the, the, the airplane in one direction. And it's just uh, up to, to us and a little bit of luck whether we reach our destination at the arrival, estimate arrival time, of course. The question of a cure for rare disease is a difficult question to answer, of course, right? Because it's phrased as whether there is one cure for the disease. We know already there is a lot of variation in the symptoms. And from the scientific research, we see that there may be a difference in the mechanisms, or at least in how bad the mechanisms are affected. And I'm not 100% confident that one drug would cure everything. 
But that's one that's one part of the question of the answer. But the and the other part is that there are many different symptoms in HC, and you may in the end have to treat uh, let's say different symptoms with different drugs, and uh, that's something that we have to discover. So whether there will be one drug in the end, I don't know. Uh, let's hope there is a drug and it is effective enough to cure, let's see, the most important uh, aspects of that disease. As a parent, I'm not used to dealing with such severe situations, but if I uh, see and hear the st stories, and see the children hear the stories, I would think that the epileptic attacks would frighten me the most that the idea that you would never know whether your child that is in an epileptic attack would have a severer outcome than uh, he or she had the last, last time. Second thing, you would know whether the attacks become more severe. And uh, with, uh, so because an attack is such an important disturbance of, of your, your bodily functions that I would worry about whether uh, there would be a worsening. Although it seems uncomfortable clear if you look at this scientific uh, data out there where there is a progressive worsening i would think that i would worry most of that about that i think you have to give a face to your disease and uh, a picture says more than a thousand words so a video especially of young children with a devastating disease uh, that uh, for which there is a potential mechanism it's just a matter of effort and energy and money to, to try and get a cure for that. So I would think that that would make a major impact. Uh, so keep awareness, let's say high, and spread awareness. Uh, I think that is a major factor. And has, I think that has also shown from other diseases that that would work. You see many patient organizations also interacting with basic scientists. And everywhere I think that is a good thing. And that will make an import, make the, make the disease a personal problem of the other person, of the, the, the researcher. Then you have uh, their, uh, uh, let's say, their energy and their, their attention. And that, I think, is uh, crucial. <laughs>